Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Emma is a returning guest. She was originally on episode 1090 called Diabetes Breakdown. Today, we'll talk about her type 1 diabetes, her use of Ozempic, how she lost weight, her social skills, anxiety, and how she feels eating around other people. Nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan. To save 40% off of your entire order at CozyEarth.com, all you have to do is use the offer code JUICEBOX at checkout. That's JUICEBOX at checkout to save 40% at CozyEarth.com. Are you an adult living with type 1 or the caregiver of someone who is and a U.S. resident? If you are, I'd love it if you would go to T1DExchange.org slash JUICEBOX and take the survey. When you complete that survey, your answers are used to move type 1 diabetes research of all kinds. So if you'd like to help with type 1 research, but don't have time to go to a doctor or an investigation, and you want to do something right there from your sofa, this is the way. T1DExchange.org slash juicebox. It should not take you more than about 10 minutes. Did you know if just one person in your family has type 1 diabetes, you're up to 15 times more likely to get it too. So screen it like you mean it. One blood test can spot type 1 diabetes early. Tap now, talk to a doctor, or visit screenedfortype1.com for more info. The show you're about to listen to is sponsored by the Eversense 365. The Eversense 365 has exceptional accuracy over one year and is the most accurate CGM in the low range that you can get. EversenseCGM.com slash juicebox. Having an easy-to-use and accurate blood glucose meter is just one click away. Contournext.com slash juicebox. That's right. Today's episode is sponsored by the Contour Next Gen Blood Glucose Meter. Hi, I'm Emma. I have type 1 diabetes. I'm 23 years old, and I'm back. Because where were you the first time? You were in episode 1090. It was called, yes. what was it called? It was called Diabetes Breakdown. Right. Do you remember why I called it that? Because I don't. Because I cry all the time. And we kind of broke down diabetes too. So it was had a little double meaning there. Nice. Was this one of those episodes where at the end I was like, try something and let me know how it goes? I think so. I think you were you were just like, stay if you stay on Ozempic, then come back and chat about it. Yeah. And you did. Yes. Okay. So let's just do a high level overview. You're diagnosed how long ago? Two, two, three. Oh my gosh. Three years. Three years. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. then at what point did your doctor add GLP to you? It was about a year ago. Okay. So you've been on Ozempic mm -hmm. for a year. Is your insurance yes. covering it? Yes, it is. I'm lucky that way. Nice. Do you know the diagnosis code they use to get it covered? No, I don't. Okay. Like, did they say you have insulin resistance or type 2 and type 1? Do you know? I think it was insulin resistance. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Good insurance. Let's just go right to that part. So you're prior to the GLP, what are your A1Cs like? About how much is your total daily insulin? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So my A1Cs were fine. It was like, I think I was even in the fives at that point, but I was like having trouble with management because my pumps weren't lasting as long as they should be because I was using so much insulin. Either they would run out, I would use like the full 200 units, mm -hmm. um, like the max amount, but they would still run out before even the three days. Or I would be doing such huge boluses, 10 units or above, because of my insulin to carb ratio was so high, I guess. Flooding your sites and they weren't absorbing yeah. well and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. So my pumps were like leaking and stuff and I wasn't getting as much insulin as I needed. So I was like having all these highs and it like it wasn't affecting my A1C, but I was just it was affecting my mental health because <laughs> I was like stressing about it all the time and just like it was just not 
We fun. Also so using told- a ton of insulin, like like you're using over. So you have Omnipod, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just know because you said over 200 units. So like so mm-hmm. so you're using over 200 units of insulin every three days. Yeah. Wow. Were you gaining weight? No. No. Okay. Was your weight prior to GLP where you wanted it to be? No. <laughs> Is there an amount of weight you would tell me that you were over where you wanted to be? Well, at one point I was like 150 pounds when I was like a freshman in college. And Mm -hmm. I also just like wasn't eating because I didn't like eating around people. So I lost a ton of weight and I was not eating in a healthy way, but I was really happy with how I looked. But then I got with my boyfriend, now fiance, and we love to eat together. And so that heart stopped. So I started eating really well, but then I gained some weight. So, and at that point we had been together for like three years. Emma, let me, let me pick through for a second. Yeah. If I asked you this the last time, tell me, but Mm -hmm. didn't like to eat in front of people. What does that mean? (laughs) I just like, I don't know. It's a weird part of my brain. I just have anxiety when I'm eating around like new people, not like people that I know or like my good friends, but like if I don't know someone, I am like thinking about what, like what I'm eating and if they're like judging me for what I'm eating and like how I'm eating it and like how much of it I'm eating. It's a really, really unhealthy way of thinking, but I just can't stop. So when I went to college, I didn't know anyone. And we would like go to the dining hall because that's what you do when you're a freshman. And I was like finding myself eating around all these new people. And like, I just, it was really hard for me. I eventually got over it, obviously. Have you ever talked to a therapist about it? No. Do you think you should or is it okay? (laughs) When I go to therapy, it's probably something that I will talk about, but I just haven't like pushed myself to go to therapy yet which i know is bad and like everyone should go to therapy but i just i don't know listen it's not bad and everybody doesn't have to go to therapy i was just wondering if you had that's all because it seems kind of like a significant thing yeah well it's not anymore just because i'm not really surrounded by new people the thing about now is that i as a as a teacher i like don't go to the lunchroom to eat with all of my colleagues that often i usually just eat in my room which is like fine. And I like know all my colleagues and I like them and I'm like still forming friendships with them in other ways. But Mm -hmm. like, I just don't find community around food in that way. I don't know. You have any insight into this at all? (laughs) No, no. Your mom, did your mom talk about your weight or something like that? Or no, like my family's never really been like that. I don't know. It's, it was probably just me being on the internet as at a young age and being impacted by that. But like when I was in high school and I would do like summer camps, like overnight, like two week, wherever I would, it was the same thing. That's kind of where it started. I think summer, camp. but yeah, this episode of the juice box podcast is sponsored by the Eversense 365. Get 365 days of comfortable wear without having to change a sensor. When you think of a continuous glucose monitor, you think of a CGM that lasts 10 or 14 days. But the Eversense 365, it lives up to its name, lasting 365 days. That's one year without having to change your CGM. With the Eversense 365, you can count on comfort and consistency 365 days a year. Because the Eversense silicone based adhesive is designed for your skin to be gentle, and to allow you to take the transmitter on and off to enjoy your shower, a trip to the pool, or an activity where you don't want your CGM on your body. If you're looking for comfort, accuracy, and a one-year wear, you are looking for Eversense 365. Go to eversensecgm.com slash juicebox to learn more. Far too often, we accept the blood glucose meter that someone hands to us. The doctor reaches into a drawer and goes, here, take this one. That is that is that the one you want? Is it accurate? You have no way of knowing. But if you want accuracy and you want to be confident in the blood glucose readings that you're getting from your meter, you want the Contour Next Gen. It's incredibly easy to get the same meter that Arden uses. 
Just go to contournext.com slash juice box. That's all you have to do. The Contour Next Gen is easy to use and highly accurate. It features a smart light that provides a simple understanding of your blood glucose levels. And of course, second chance sampling technology that can help you to save money with fewer wasted strips. Contournext.com slash juice box. Your kids mean everything to you and you'd do anything for them, especially if they're at risk. So when it comes to type 1 diabetes, screen it like you mean it. Because if even just one person in your family has type 1, your child is up to 15 times more likely to get it. But just one blood test can help you spot it early. So don't wait. Talk to your doctor about screening. Tap now or visit screenfortype1.com to get more info and screen it like you mean it. Huh. I don't know. All right. It's okay. We'll get past it. Did you get, well, wait, now I'm going to ask one more question. Do you consider it an eating disorder of some kind? You could, I guess. Who's you? I think Hold on, was... I was talking to you. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. let's find out if it's actually. I call it like eating anxiety is what I call it. Not being able to eat in front of other people considered an eating disorder. Blisk, chat GPT. Yes. Okay. Not being oh. able to eat in front of other people can be considered a sign of an eating disorder or related anxiety issue. This condition might be linked to social anxiety, where the person feels self-conscious or anxious about being observed while eating. It's important to consult a healthcare professional. All right, all right, all right. It's going to tell you the stuff you're supposed yeah, to do now. Do you have right. social anxiety? Yeah. Okay. But, but doesn't everyone have a little bit of social anxiety? I have none. Zero. Wow. Absolutely not. What's that like? It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't say something to me that I couldn't just do in front of people. That's amazing. I don't even care. I I swear to you, like I have like opportunities to speak sometimes in front of like four or five hundred people at a time, like in person. And I'll be standing outside chatting with people and someone will come up to me and go, Hey, your thing's about to start. And I'll go, Oh, okay. And someone will say, What are you speaking about? And I'll go, I don't know. And I just walk in. Wow. And just go. And then it's over and people are like, oh my God, that was so great. In the situation I'm, I'm describing now, I had like a, a flimsy understanding of what I was there to do, but mm -hmm. I never, like you get up there and you're like, hey everybody, I'm going to talk now and you just start talking. And there's no, like, I don't feel anxious about it one little bit. My, my heartbeat is low. My pulse is low. Like I'm like, it's, it feels very good to me to be doing that. That's kind of like a superpower. Well, it would be if I could fly too. <laughs> like if I could fly while I was doing it, then I would completely agree with you. Like, I know we're supposed to say we feel lucky if anything happens to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like how at this point now I have to say I feel lucky to to have a, a house. I feel lucky if I have food. I'm lucky if I have insurance. I feel lucky that I don't have diabetes. I feel lucky that my kid has insulin. Mm -hmm. I feel lucky that I don't have anxiety. There's a lot of ass mm -hmm. covering going on in society right now, Emma. Right. So I'll get on the train. I feel lucky that I don't have a problem with that, but it's just the thing that I'm good at. There's plenty of things I'm not good at that you know, nobody says they feel lucky if they can do. Anyway, all right, so you have social anxiety to some degree. This is how it pops up, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Get the diabetes, pumping, using a lot of insulin. Doctor says, hey, why don't you try Ozempic? Mm -hmm. And you go, all right, whatever. Is that what yeah, you said? You're I, like, we're cool, let's do it? Or what, are you, what were your thoughts? At that point, it was already like kind of... There was already some stigma attached to it, like in the media with like all of these celebrities taking it for weight loss and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I like had a ton of questions about like side effects and like how else it would affect me. My doctor was basically like, well, there could be side effects like nausea and all this stuff, but you you don't know how it will affect you until you take it. And it's something that we can try. And then if you don't like it or whatever, we can just, you know, Stop. do something else. Yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'll do it. Yeah. And so I started taking it. And I think when we filmed, I had been taking it for like one week. Yeah. Basically. You had just started. So, so let's walk through it. Like, what was it like in the beginning? What did you notice? Are you still taking it now? Let's hear all about it. At the beginning, I feel like there was kind of a drastic change. Like it really affected my appetite and it really affected how much insulin I was using. I used a lot less. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, I like 
wouldn't have to pre bolus at all, basically, because it was making the insulin work faster too. Like I, I wouldn't have to wait 20 minutes. I could like bolus right before I ate basically. And that kind of happened every time my dose would go up. So, but then I don't know, it would kind of like go, those effects would like not be as much. And then it would kind of plateau. Hold your thought. Omnipod dash or Omnipod five? Omnipod five. Okay. And Basically, I feel like there are two things happening. First of all, you take the medication and it helps with insulin sensitivity. It helps with insulin mm-hmm. sensitivity a bunch of different ways. One of those ways is by slowing your digestion down. So is mm-hmm. your insulin working faster or are you digesting more slowly so the insulin is having more time to work before the impact of the food is coming? Which do you think you were seeing? Probably the digestion. Okay. Okay. And then as you upped your dose, you noticed it for a while, but then it wasn't as, as much at that point. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, and then I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Just let me jump in for a second. My, this is a guess. Yeah. This is an absolute guess, right? But you're using one dose for a while. You get to kind of a, a point where the pump is seeing your total daily insulin being aggressive based on that. Suddenly you take a new dose, which changes probably your, slows your digestion down more. You get the other impacts of GLPs and on top of that, so uh, better insulin sensitivity, but also Mm -hmm. you probably can't eat as much. Is that right? When you go up a dose. Yeah. And then the algorithm in the Omnipod 5 is still bolusing at you like you're on your old settings Mm -hmm. with a lower dose. And then eventually, I would imagine that the pump then figures out your total daily insulin for your new reality, and then it levels out again. That's my expectation yeah. for what happened. Yeah, you're probably right. It's possible. I never, I never thought it through like that, but you're probably, you're probably right. Well, you're busy dodging people when you have a pretzel in your hand, so you don't have time to think about these things. Oh my gosh. The thing about Ozempic, uh, about taking this weekly injection, is that I love that it's made me lose or sorry, use less insulin and that now my pump works better and everything. But it's also another variable to think about in my brain when I'm bolusing and stuff because there's like, it's not as effective. Like there's different effectivenesses like throughout the week. Does that make sense? Like it kind of peaks in the middle of the week. Yeah. And then it, you know, so I have to also think about that when I'm bolusing, whether to like kind of lowball the carbs because I know that the is like working really well right now because it's in the middle of the week. Yada yada. So like most of my lows happen in the middle of the week. Yeah. Because it's just working well. The half life of the medication is very short. So mm-hmm. you inject it on a Saturday. And now you're all juiced up Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, then Wednesday. It starts to wane, right? And then yeah. Thursday, Friday. So even if you're, you'll notice like I can like I can eat more on Thursday or Friday than I can mm-hmm. on Monday or Tuesday. And yeah. yeah, and so and so the way you're adjusting around them is by basically like being more or less aggressive with your carb counts depending on where in the week you are. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, that's really smart. Okay, so how much? Like you said before, you were using 200 units every three days. How many units do you think you're using every three days now? Did I see on my pump? Let I bet see. you could. I think it's like 50 a day, 50 units a day. So you you cut 50 units out over three days. So like 15, six, like 16 units a day, it went down. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And did you lose weight? Not really. Did you, okay. honestly? But I haven't. But I haven't been like exercising or like actively trying. Which now I am doing because I get am getting married in a year. So now I'm actually trying trying to lose weight. So tell me how much weight you hope to lose. Twenty five, thirty pounds. Okay. And how much have you lost so far on Ozempic? Like maybe like five. Okay. And you've been using like it for really not that much. How long? For a year. A year. So mm-hmm. what's your dose at now? My sorry, say that again? Ozempic dose. How much? Oh, it's I think I'm at four units. They're milligrams. Yeah, sorry. No, don't milligrams. be sorry. Yeah. So does she have you dial to two milligrams inject and then do it again? Is that how that pen works? 
or can you go all the way to no, four? I think it's a, I think it's a four. I might be wrong. Let me try. Because it's possible you're just not like using enough, and that's why you're not losing weight. <laughs> it's the yellow box. Emma, the last time we spoke, did I turn into your dad at some point and feel like I had to take care of you? You did. Yeah, it's starting to happen to me now. My dad's name is Scott. Starting to happen to me now. It's two milligrams. It's two milligrams. I'm I'm silly. It's two, not four. Yeah, that's okay. I know. Which is the most. So so you're shooting two milligrams of Ozempic a day. Yeah. No, a, a week. A week. Excuse yes. me. That was my fault. And then, but. So I think you're running into something that a lot of people with Ozempic run into, which is that's the highest dose. Mm-hmm. And it's possible they could use more after a while. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that, so you haven't lost, I mean, you lost five pounds in a year, which is great, but it's not a lot compared mm-hmm. to what you're seeing with some people. So let's talk about it. Ozempic, does it curb your appetite? Does it make you feel full in your head? Does it make your stomach feel full? Like what's all the impacts you're getting from it? along eating? I think it does. It has affected my appetite. It definitely did more in the beginning when I first started taking it, but that could also just be be like my brain getting used to it. Like, do I really remember what my appetite was like a year ago? I don't know, (laughs) (laughs) but I do think I'm eating less food. Like I'm physically not able to eat more. The mass of food is less like the actual, like, like physical amount of it. Have you changed the things that you're eating? Are there things that you can't eat anymore or not attracted to anymore? That kind of thing? I really don't like meat as much. I didn't like ever love meat, but I sometimes I like physically can't eat it. Like mm-hmm. it just, it's just off putting to me, like the taste and the smell. Like when meat is being cooked, I like have to leave the room because it makes me feel nauseous sometimes. Since Ozempic or always? Since Ozempic, yeah. That's interesting. How are you getting your protein? I just eat beet. My fiance just seasons it really well. He makes it. He makes it yummy. But I, yeah, it's hard. I don't know. Chicken. I thought about going vegetarian. Chicken, mostly chicken. Mostly yeah, chicken. Okay, so you're getting some protein every week. Yeah. Okay, but you don't like because Arden doesn't like the overall smell or taste of meat either. But it was before. Mm-hmm. It was before her GLP as well. Is she is she on it now too? Yeah, she's using Manjaro. Is that how you say? Oh, it? okay. So my I just had a meeting with my endo. I was talking to her about how I want to lose more weight and whatever, whatever. And she's moving me to Manjaro. Oh, cool. But I don't know how different they are. She said that they that Manjaro is more like aggressive or it like works better. So there's a GLP and a GIP in Manjaro. Uh, it could help you more with weight loss. It might be easier on some of your gastrointestinal issues if you're having any. Are you having any? Do you want to talk mm. about your poop while we're here? <laughs> we can. Go ahead. The truth is I don't have any. Like, I'm pretty regular, to be honest. Nice. It comes out the way you like? It's not squishy or yeah. nasty or anything like that? No, yeah. It's kind of perfect. I don't know. No really? complaints. Yeah. Perfect, like, you know, the, the different, like, the different kinds of poop? Um, you don't know, oh, no. oh, Emma, this is what we're going to do. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold tight. Okay. I had to do this with the guys helping me with my gut health stuff. And now you're going to have to do it with me. Let me find awesome. the chart of poop. Oh my God. You I think can't wait. Googling poop chart gets me there. <laughs> I'm going for that. Hold on a second. Poop chart takes you right to it. I'll be goddamn. How about that? <laughs> All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You can buy this on uh, Etsy and hang it in your bathroom if you want. Oh, great. All right. So there are seven types of poop. Okay. Type one, separate hard lumps like nuts, severe constipation. Is that you? No. Okay. Type two, sausage shaped but lumpy, mild constipation. Mm, No. Good. Type three, sausage shaped but with cracks on the surface. I feel like... That's me. Okay. Type four, sausage or snake-like, smooth and soft. Sometimes that's me. Keep going. I'm going to keep going. Then we're going to go back. Okay. Type five, (laughs) soft blobs with clear-cut edges lacking fiber. No. Okay. Type six, mushy consistency with ragged edges, fluffy pieces. No. Type seven, completely liquid, watery, no solid pieces. No. Congratulations. You have chosen the two of seven stool types that are considered normal. 
Congratulations. You are a type one diabetic and a type three and a type four. Yes. Yeah. Look at you. That's very good. It's super exciting. Don't you think? I know. That, yeah. No, it is. Yeah. This is like my birthday. Well, this is the best. You, yeah. You can just uh, Google poop chart if you want and then go to images and they're just everywhere. There's also so, colors of poop we could go over, but I don't think it's necessary. Who mm-hmm. got put in charge? Mm-hmm. By the way, this is the Bristol stool form scale for children or, or, or for adults, the poop chart. Who had to animate? Like, like what poor person's job was it to draw poop? Do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I, ho- I hope they got paid well. They didn't. Trust me. <laughs> they absolutely didn't. They they went home and they said to their fiance, can you f-ing believe that I had to draw poop today? <laughs> I wonder how many pictures of shit they had to look at, oh, like reference photos. That's the other thing. There were reference photos that they had to look at to yeah. draw it. And then they probably don't even have health care at their job. Terrible. Tough. All right, Emma, listen. Now we know you're pooping good. That's great. But they're mm-hmm. moving, the doctor's moving you because of insulin resistance to the Manjaro or because they think you're going to lose more weight. What is the reason you're being moved? I think it's because they think I'm going to lose more weight. Okay. I told her, I was like, I have a wedding to be in and I need to be skinnier. Morgan is what I said to her. Emma, and Emma, she said, okay. I know you're young, but you want to lose weight because it's healthier for you. Okay. That's <laughs> also true. Yes, and you'll just, just look good in your dress because you're healthy. So, no, but I want, but the photos, I want to be able to look at the photos and be like, oh, I look so happy and pretty and not, oh, I look so happy, but I am fat, you know? <laughs> Are you fat now? I, yeah, it's just how you look at yourself, you know? I know, but what about, let's just use the BMI, the BMI scale. Do you know your BMI? Oh, no, no clue. Right, hold on a second. Do you know how tall you are? Yeah. What's your height? 5'4". Five, 5'4". Four. Five, four. You can tell me your weight? Yeah, Go 200. Ahead. Okay. And then we'll get your BMI. Based on your height and weight, you have a body mass index of 34.3. This falls into the category of obesity. Generally, a BMI between 18 and 24.9 is considered healthy. So that's the way I would hope you would think about it, which is you're not trying to look nice in a dress. You'll just look nice in a dress. I bet you, first of all, at your current weight, I bet you would look nice in your dress. But I I hear what you're saying. And so you could lose, see, you said 30 pounds, but that's not really, this happened to me. Let me share with you. When I started to lose weight, I was 5'9", and I weighed 236 pounds. And my wife said to me, how much weight do you want to lose? And do you know what I said? What? 20 pounds. And she goes, 20 pounds? You'll still be fat if you lose 20 pounds. And I was like, hey. (laughs) Actually, that's what she said. And I'm like, no, no, I'm like, 20 pounds is right. So I get on the juice. I'm hitting the juice and I'm doing my business and I'm losing my weight and I lose 20 pounds. I look in the mirror and I thought, oh, hell, I'm fat. How did I not realize <laughs> this? Like, like, how did I not realize where my weight was and what it kind of become? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't see that. And so I thought, well, 30 pounds, obviously. And then I'm down to 206 one day and I'm like, nope, this is not close. And I started like looking at my body more about like health. And I was like, like, where am I carrying fat? Like in that, like that mm-hmm. fat needs to go for me to be healthy. I lost 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. I'm now I've lost 47 pounds. And if you saw me today, you'd be like, oh my God, Scott, you look fantastic. And I would say, thank you. And then I would say, I still have to lose weight. Now I don't feel like weight's my issue I think fat's my issue. Like I, I want the fat to go away, especially around my midsection. Don't want to have a heart attack, et cetera. My knees feel mm-hmm. better. I'm healthier. My blood works better. All the other things that are actually important over how you look. Not that how you look isn't important, but all these things are getting better. But I stopped to reflect and I thought, I don't know how much more weight I have to lose. Like, I don't think of it that way. I think of like, I just think in, in terms of like the fat is what I'm saying to you, right? So when that, Mm -hmm. when this fat that I'm squeezing right now is gone, I don't know what I'm going to weigh, but I don't care. Like the number's completely inconsequential to me. I really don't care about the number. Mm -hmm. I reflected on how far off I was 
on the number. Like I was so wrong about the number. And I don't know how that happened. Like, you know, like you talk about your brain, like getting used to things or Mm -hmm. you look in the mirror and you just, you see yourself, you don't see, you don't see what you looked like five pounds ago or something like that for some. And and it's, it's very quickly, your brain tells you like, this is what you look like. And you're like, okay. And I'm like, I like myself. So this is great. You know what I mean? Like I I never Mm -hmm. really used to think about myself in terms of like, when you ask me to describe myself, I would never describe myself physically. Yeah. I would tell you about like my thoughts or how I think about things or who I care about, what I do for a living. All those things would come up first. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think I ever accurately saw my health, especially as an assessment of my, of my, I guess I should have said, I don't think I ever accurately saw my weight as an assessment of my health. Like I just, I was happy with who I was as a person. So I never thought about my weight. Mm -hmm. And now I look back at a photo and I think, how could I have thought that that person really only could have used to lose 20 pounds. It's really interesting. I wonder if you're going to go through some of those things as you, uh, as you lose weight. Yeah, maybe probably. Is it hard to talk about? I weirdly, I have like an easier time talking about my shit than I do this. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I think it's because like, as a woman, like it's something that we have to think about constantly. And so I feel like, I've taken the time and the work to like not think about it constantly, Mm -hmm. which I'm happy with because it's not like impacting my mental health as much. But in that same vein, like I don't love to talk about it. Like even my, my grandma, whenever she sees me, no matter what I look like, she's always like, Emily, you've lost weight. You look amazing. Like even if I've, even if I had gained 50 pounds, I think she would still say that to me. Really? Because she like just sees that as like a compliment and something that everyone wants to hear. Mm-hmm. I think that the younger generations are kind of moving towards like, why is anybody talking about anyone else's body? Like, why is that even a topic of discussion, especially for women, just because it's so prevalent in society and like, talking about how other women look and comparing yourself and all these things. Um, And so I don't know, I've, I've conditioned my brain to like not want to talk about it. And like, I don't know. Right. So first of all, I know what you look like. You're adorable. That's the first thing. Okay. And like, (laughs) so like no one should think otherwise and you shouldn't think otherwise. Uh, But it's interesting because as you were talking about it, like you almost said something I feel like you stopped yourself. Like I've conditioned myself not to think about my weight that way for my mental health, but you paused because for your physical health, it's not valuable, but you know that, right? I guess so. I mean, I guess uh, I think the thing about my physical health is that there's so much of my brain power that goes toward my physical health in terms of diabetes. Mm -hmm. Like I make so many decisions about my physical health daily because of diabetes that everything else is just kind of like non-consequential. Like it, it's not as important to me because my sugars are so important to me. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does because, and I've, I've interviewed a lot. I've, I've recorded a lot today. I just talked to a guy who said that he started to gain weight with type one. And he thinks that one of the reasons why it happened is because he started seeing food and carbs as this thing that he could conquer with insulin Mm -hmm. and he stopped thinking about it as nutrition or calories yeah and so he's like it didn't matter how much i ate if i kept my blood sugar stable i was like i win yeah and he thought that it felt like that was his only goal and then he looked back in hindsight and he's like oh i was eating way too many calories but i didn't think anything of it because my blood sugar didn't go up right you know i I definitely relate to that yeah so there's this like, and you're young too. So mm-hmm. have you seen the South Park special about Ozempic? No, I haven't. Okay. They made a movie, like a 50 minute movie about like Ozempic and Mancharo. It's interesting. And there's a running joke inside of it, which I think took some flack online, but they said that keeping in mind, this is satire. They're trying to make a, a bigger point. And basically mm-hmm. the, what they were saying was, Hey, if you if you have money, you get Ozempic or Manjaro. And if you don't have money, you get this other medication. 
And this, this other medication is body positivity. Oh, God. And yeah. I laughed because I was like, oh, my God, I see what they're saying, right? Like, big, mm-hmm. like bigger picture, what they're saying is if you can afford to be thin, then here. And if you can't mm-hmm. afford it, then we love you just the way you are. Yeah. And and I was like, oh, my God, like because uh, South Park is generally speaking a fairly liberal minded thing. But I think people mm-hmm. would hear that as a very conservative view. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I making sense here? Yeah, 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 you uh, are. Okay, okay. So like the idea of like telling so, like it's it's kind of like it's kind of the feeling of like look, we you know, there were at one point there were people saying, "Look, I love myself the way I am." And everybody's like, "Yeah, you should love yourself the way you are." And then at some point that that somehow translated into being unhealthy is okay if you love how you are. Mm-hmm. And I feel like somehow there's a connection between that and the person who told me that as long as I could conquer the carbs with insulin, I didn't think about the calories. Yeah. And either I'm drawing a really squiggly line or I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Cause I'm, I'm in fairness, this is a podcast. I'm talking out loud, trying to figure something out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're in that space where you're young enough to think like, I don't mean it this way, but like, like you have more liberal views which everybody has when they're younger. Usually people's Mm -hmm. views get more conservative as they get older. You have liberal views, but you're not old enough to actually see the health concerns of extra weight. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel like if I got you into a time machine and made you 50 years old and you lived for the next 50 years at a BMI of like 36, if you wouldn't go like, I should have like done whatever I could have done back then. Cause this is where, this is where I am now. Anyway, yeah. it's these two competing ideas that kind of stop people from it's the it's the psychological piece that stops you from worrying about the physical piece. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. and, and if you have to for your mental health, then that's, of course, I think paramount. But I don't think one doesn't exist because of the other. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, your insulin needs are down, which is, is great. Mm-hmm. You are. Wanting to lose weight for your wedding. Mm-hmm. How long till your wedding? A year. A year. Oh, congratulations. It'll be in the summer. Yeah. Very nice time to do it. Very nice. What is it you're going to do between now and then? Like you said, I'm not exercising, but is that a thing you're going to add? Yeah. No, I bought I bought a stepper. I also like hate going to the gym. It's a similar anxiety to my eating anxiety mm-hmm. that I just don't like people observing me when I'm sweaty and gross so i bought like at home things to do which i'm gonna start doing daily i have started doing daily and it's i don't know it's kind of fun because i can just like watch tv and do things i would normally do when i was sitting on the couch and now i'm being active which is nice yeah but yeah but i know otherwise like the thing about okay here's the thing because you were saying how like you've lost so much weight and blah 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 and you're always like you're always wanting to lose more and my thing is that, like, I'm not super, like, I, I say that my goal is 25 to 30 pounds because I feel like that's totally doable in a year. And I don't want it to become, like, a completely different part of my life. Like, I like the way that I live. I like the things that I eat. I like the things that I do. And, like, I don't know. I don't want, like, losing weight to, like, take over every moment of my day. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? No, I understand. And I also don't want to put a number on it that's so that would take so much time to get to that it would feel like a failure even though you were moving mm-hmm. in the right direction. Is that right? Yeah. Do you think you'd get yeah. to 25 pounds and go, okay, that took as long as it took. I did it healthily. I'm going to keep going. Or do you think you'd get to the number no matter what, go, I did it. And that would be the end. Part of me thinks I would just get to the number and be like, okay, this is great. Because like, I remember what I looked like when I was that weight. And the thing, the thing about that is that however small I've been, I've always been like, "Mm, I look big because that's just how women's brains work. Like we're just always comparing. So I don't know. Truth is, I don't know. I appreciate you talking through it. It's really very nice. It's, it's a little, Listen, the one thing that's off-putting about talking to you is you sound like you're 16, so, like, yeah. even though I know you're not. 
I know you're 23 and you're a teacher and you're out in the world being an adult and everything and getting married. But when you're talking like I, I, there's a voice in my head that's like, don't ask her that. She's so young. And then I'm like, no, she's not. Wait a minute. <laughs> like, it's hard to talk about. And I appreciate you talking about it because it's obviously it's not comfortable. Also, you know, where your body is good for you, your health and your happiness, et cetera, isn't mm-hmm. necessarily tied to a BMI chart. You know, like it's mm-hmm. not at all. I'm happy to say that, like, I, I really don't care about, like, the number. I just care about my health. Like, it mm-hmm. really, like, it, it, my blood work is so good now. And I'm like, okay, great. That's one step. But that's not a thing a 23-year-old thinks about. And then, yeah. you know, like, my next step is to make sure I don't have a heart attack. Like, that's literally, like, how I'm thinking about this. You know, my shirt size being smaller is nice and everything. And, you know, but that's, like... If I wasn't going to have a heart attack and my blood work was good, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't care about that part. Like, I'm going to probably mm-hmm. end up with loose skin. And the truth is, is I don't think I care about that at all. You know, That's like, good. Yeah, yeah, even though it's visual, like, I don't think it's a thing I care about. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to adjust your insulin, though. The Omnipod 5 kind of did it for you, right? You just differently assessed the carbs until the pump caught up to your new need. Is that how you handled it? Yeah, and my, yeah, and I honestly, I don't, I, my settings, (laughs) my endo gets mad at me because of how much I like, I used to do like ghost carbs Mm -hmm. because I would like have these highs and I would like hate looking at like that number. Yeah. And so I would just tell my pump that I was eating even when I wasn't. And I've like really tried to stop doing that and I'm doing it less p- partly because I'm not having as many highs because of Olympic, um, but also because I'm just telling myself not to do it and my pump will get smarter if I don't do it. My pump settings, my insulin to carb ratio and correction factor and all that stuff. I don't know how true it is because for a while my insulin to carb ratio was one unit to 10 carbs because I would like look at food and instead of seeing the carbs, I would see units. Yeah. And so it was easier for my brain to have count that, counts. that like 10 units because it was easier math. And then my endocrinologist got mad at me and she made me change my correct or my her ratio. So now it's like eight. And so now I'm kind of having to relearn carbs and carb counting because I like, wait, was it working for you? That. Yes and no. Okay. It was like, it was working fine, but I was like just working too hard. And she was like, no, your pump settings need to be correct. And I was like, okay. So she I made your insulin to carb ratio a little stronger. Yes. Okay. Um, and that wor- that's been helpful? Yeah. Have you remembered to go back into your manual settings and change them? So if you ever switch into manual, you're not getting like, like crazily different amounts of insulin than you need. No, <laughs> because your total daily insulin today is probably significantly lower than it was a year ago. Yeah, you're so, right. I, yeah. I'm just never in manual, though, is the thing. Yeah. Well, you can go in your settings, just see your total daily insulin, do the basal and then do the breakdown and go back and tell the manual yeah. side of the, the pump what's up. Um, but OK, yeah, you don't go into manual ever. So the Omnipod 5 works really well for you then. Yeah, well, OK, my at my endocrinologist visit recently she also suggested that i go to the oh it's the new i should know the name of it oh it's it's the newer pump for t slim is that the name of it the moby i don't know it it looks like an omnipod but it has like a injection site and like a two inch tube i think that's like the a moby. tiny tube yeah and what's your a1c right now it's five five why would she want you to change because I struggle with my management around my period and like going from like being super sensitive to being super resistant and like having all that in my head is kind of hard and like taxing. Right. And so if I were to switch pumps, I could have like a period program basically. A pro, a pro- yeah. And be like, it would, I could be able to make it really accurate and whatever and the other thing is that i could do extended boluses which is something i like deeply miss from my um omnipod dash okay yeah every time somebody comes on they say to me could you please ask omnipod to put an extended bolus in omnipod 5 and i'm like i am not in charge of that but okay 
Yeah, I hear that from a lot of people that they they wish it had an extended bolus feature to help yeah. with like more fatty stuff. And I'm interested to see what happens to you when they move you to the Manjaro though, because I feels like there's a lot more ceiling for you that you haven't mm -hmm. gotten to yet. Because the truth is like, so we, we never got to this. So let's go backwards a little bit. Impact on, I find it impacts like three things. So how fast do you fill up your stomach, your physical stomach? Does your mm -hmm. brain tell you you're hungry? Like, so does your brain tell you you're hungry ever? Sometimes, but it's not, I don't know. The, uh, one thing that I've noticed, sorry if I can interrupt, is like food noise mm -hmm. is like gone, which I like always had before. Right. I don't think about food and like my next meal and whatever, whatever. I just like don't think about that stuff anymore, which is something that I did think about a lot. But um, I would say I, I don't get hungry that often, but sometimes I do, depending on how long it's been since I've eaten. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't, eat, I haven't eaten yet today and I am not super hungry. And it's like 12, 1 30. Yeah. One. So can you contextualize the difference between brain hunger and stomach hunger? I have sometimes a hard time explaining it, but like, you know what I mean? Like you have that empty feeling in your stomach, like you have to eat mm -hmm. versus the yeah. like, I want food feeling in your head. Yes. I So I do feel stomach hunger, but not brain hunger. Okay. Do you have trouble eating even when you feel hungry? No. No. Not anymore. I think when I first started, I did, but not anymore. Okay. Did you have to teach yourself? I'm starting to think about it that way. Like you almost have to teach yourself to eat on a GLP again. Kind of. Yeah. At school, I like don't eat a lot of food. I kind of only eat like one meal a day, like a big dinner. Mm -hmm. And then my lunches are like little snack packs with like tiny crackers and like some cheese. Yeah. And like, that's it. Do you have a feeling for why you haven't lost more weight? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I guess, cause like the food I'm eating, it's not that it's not nutritious because I don't I I like I eat my veggies and whatever but I don't know my boyfriend cooks with like lots of butter and things like that which um we're trying to cut back slow down but yeah and a lot I, of calories again, I'm not in, that active yeah I think people think of butter as fat but there's a lot of calories in butter too yeah interesting are you just the person who like because you don't want people to see you sweaty or because you just don't love activity both yeah. <laughs> Food noise. My wife talked about the food noise. She told me about mm -hmm. it. I, I brought it up on here before. And she's like, I used to wake up in the morning and first thing I thought was like, what's for breakfast? Yeah. And then she's like, and then I thought about it right up until I ate breakfast. Then I started thinking about what was for lunch. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that how it felt for you? Yeah. yeah. And it was not even like meals, but I'd be like, mm. like I would be like bored and I would be like, oh, I just want crackers or I want like chips. Like, I feel like it would be... Uh, something to combat boredom, boredom and I don't feel myself turning to food in that way anymore at all. Nice. That's excellent. Okay. Well, first of all, I wish you luck. I hope the night that the change in meds, so are they going to put you on 2.5 to start or five of Manjaro? I'm not sure. Okay. It's probably 2.5 for four weeks, then five for four weeks, then seven and mm -hmm. a half. And they'll move you up until you get what you're looking for. Yeah. And then adding the activity will be a big deal for you too. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Do you have trouble drinking water? Because some people even say like on the, on the GLP, they not only you're not hungry, but you don't think about drinking either. No, I like, I drink water, but I feel like I get dehydrated easier. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I like, I feel like I need to drink more water than I had been. Okay. All right. Okay. So food noise, hunger. So do your stomach feel empty ever? Like if I don't eat at school at all, then when I come home, I like feel hungry in the way that my stomach is empty, mm -hmm. which happens like maybe like once every two weeks or something. If I'm like super busy at school, but I'm sorry. A lot of my answers are like, I don't know. <laughs> don't, you don't have I to don't, be sorry. Like I, 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 and it's weird because I am someone who like researches things and gets super into that, but. Ozempic, I and and with diabetes, I'm like super upfront, and I like to wear my sites where they're visible, and I like to talk to people about it. Yeah, but I think because there's so much stigma with Ozempic, especially, I like am not 
I don't know. I'm not like shouting from the rooftops that I'm on Ozempic because it's like, I don't know. I, it, what will people think of me? Which is like not nice, but I don't know. Oh, so, so what will they think of you that you're using a GLP medication? Yeah. Are you afraid that they'll, that'll make them think you have weight to lose or do you think, or are you afraid it'll make them feel like you're cheating or what, what is it? Kind of both. (laughs) Kind of both. And it's like, and it's like, like I am happy with how I look, like despite every, literally everything I've said Mm -hmm. (laughs) on this podcast, like I am happy with how I look and I don't, like I don't look in the mirror and I don't hate myself. Like I really am happy. So I feel like admitting that I'm on this medication, I'm always like, but it's for my diabetes management. Like it's for my insulin resistance. It's not because I'm trying to lose weight, which is like kind of ridiculous. I mean, it it is, but I'm trying to figure out why you feel that way. Because I'm mentally ill. (laughs) I need to see a therapist. That's why. But do you actually believe you're mentally ill? No. No. That's just what the kids say. It's what the kids say. Do you think you need therapy? I think everyone would benefit from therapy. Even me? Wait, even me? Yes. I'm just kidding, of course. Also, I I get therapy all the time on the podcast. I get to talk to people about all kinds of stuff. (laughs) You're afraid of what people will think. I'm So I'm the opposite. Like if people say to me, oh God, you look amazing. The first thing I say is I'm using ZepBound. And they Mm. go, what? And then I make like the like the motion, like I'm injecting something into my stomach and they go, Oh, okay. (laughs) But I haven't cared what anybody thought of me since I was like 15. I don't think so. It's awesome. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It just comes from like, I mean, you don't care, but like, I, I just, I grew up in a way where I needed to be my own person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't let somebody's opinion of what I was supposed to be doing or or thinking like impact me or I would have got sucked down a rabbit hole of being what they wanted me to be. And I wasn't up for that. Mm-hmm. Having said that, I still, I know that that's not as easy said. It's easier said than done for a lot of people. And I'm just, I, I after I joked about this earlier, I feel weird saying this, but I am just lucky that that's the way my brain works. So, yeah. you know, I, I recognize that it's just, it's a crap shoot to feel the way you feel about something. Like I could easily be uncomfortable eating in front of people and you could be, you know, super confident and Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like who would know why it happens for one person, not the other. Right. But yeah, like I just tell them right away. I'm like, I'm using Ozempic. It worked great. I've lost 47 pounds. Like, Oh my God, that's terrific. You're all done. I'm like, Nope, I want to lose more. How much? I'm like, doesn't really matter. But my guess is 15 or 20 pounds. And they go, no, 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 you look terrific. I said, please don't say that because I, I don't care how I look. Try not to have a heart attack. Mm-hmm. One of the things I've run into the most along this journey is people telling me that I've lost too much weight. Really? Yeah. And I'm like, well, what is this then? This thing I can hold on to here in front of me that has nothing to do with anything. It's not an organ. It's not important. It's not a muscle. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? You look great. And it's just people are short sighted. They're like, you look better than the last time I saw you. So you're uh-huh. good. Yeah. That's how they think about it. But like, so what would happen? If, I don't know, if Emma was in the grocery store and some lady walked up to her and said, oh, do you remember me from church? Let's just say. And you go, I don't remember Mm -hmm. you from church. She goes, I remember you. You've lost weight. You look great. What happens next in your mind? I would be like, oh, thanks. And then I would ask her something else. Like I wouldn't, because in my head, it's like, why are you commenting on my body? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. What if you brought it up? What if, if they said to you, my God, you look so much healthier. I'm trying to do that. What did you do? And you like were openly. Oh, if, then, they, if they asked what I did, then I would be honest for sure. Mm-hmm. But only if they asked. Such an interesting thing between the generations here. <clears throat> if I may yeah. hold on a second, because everybody's judging each other constantly. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, right. You do it. Mm-hmm. Do you not? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. So are you worried about what people are thinking of you because you know what you're thinking about them? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not I'm not a judgy person, but like you can't not. Like you can't just turn that part of your brain off. It's part of being a person and a woman. If it's a human thing to look at other people and make a judgment, mm-hmm. when you talk about it, you say people judge each other like it's a bad thing. Isn't it a normal thing? I know in my brain that 
I'm saying nice things about other people in my head, but I don't, I know that other people don't do that. You know, because you hear them? No. Because you assume. Because I assume the worst of humanity. (laughs) But do you, should I assume the worst of you? No. Why would you assume the worst of them then? Because I don't know them. I don't know who they are. And they're strangers. Mm Hmm. This is interesting. I'm enjoying this. First of all, it doesn't matter what they think of you because they have no impact or sway over you at all. Like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're not actually saying it to you, then your worry is only something you're manifesting in your own mind. Right? Right. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because it's, it's less about strangers. It's less about people I meet on the street. Like I really don't care about people that I don't know. Okay. It's more about social media. And like people that I know from high school who who I haven't seen in like five years. And like, obviously I look different than I did when I was in high school and like thinking about what they think about it and that sort of thing. It's, it's not really about strangers. So it's not your mom. It's not people that you don't know on the streets. <laughs> it's about people who you tangentially know who will see you on Instagram Yes, which is so dumb. Oh, it's I know. Dumb. I'm I listening know to dumb. you. Yeah, yeah. So, like, may I ask a, like, what seems like the most obvious question? Why don't you delete Instagram? Because it's, I have to be connected. So that you can everybody. feel badly? No, I, I, here's the thing. I don't, I don't post that much on Instagram anymore. Like, I'm not like, it's not something that I obsess over. It's just like when I feel like I should post, for example, getting engaged, mm-hmm. I like, I'm constantly thinking about that. But if I don't have to post on Instagram, then I don't. How many followers do you have on Instagram? Like over a thousand. (laughs) I'm not laughing at you, but I am. Hold on a second. How many of them do you think are actually still on Instagram? I don't know. Okay. When you put up a picture, how many people like it? What's your number? I know you know. I definitely know you know. My normal is like 200-ish, maybe a little bit more. But then my engagement post got like 700 okay. or something. So a fifth of the people that follow you on Instagram normally like your picture. And uh-huh. when you put up your engagement picture, then all those, all those nosy bitches like double clicked it. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Okay. And this is a thing you've been like, you've, con- you've concerned yourself with. Yes, because I have to. It's not like I want to think about this. It's because I have to. Emma, do you know what I love about you? What? You answer one way, but your voice says, I don't agree with what I'm saying while you're saying it. No, it's true. (laughs) It's like, I hate this. (laughs) It's fantastic to listen to you argue with yourself. (laughs) It's like my favorite thing. And if you don't giggle every couple of seconds, I feel like I'm letting you down. But that's neither here nor there. So you won't delete Instagram because it's very important, but it mostly makes you feel bad. (laughs) But not because of what somebody says, but because of what you are afraid they're thinking. Yes. You understand this is all anxiety, right? Yes. All right. All right. right. So you don't just have an anxiety about eating in front of people. You have anxiety in general. Yes. Yeah. You should have my job for a couple of weeks. You'd stop caring what people thought of you. Why? Why is that? Oh my God. Because if I got upset every time somebody cursed at me or told me that I'm pushing carbs on people, I'm pushing a GLP agenda, you deleted Mm. my comment and that wasn't fair. You're trying to, I don't have free speech. And then all the whining and fucking crying from the very, what you realize it's a very small percentage of people. It's not everybody. I have. Listen, because I'm going to talk in your language for a minute, okay? I have 21,000 Instagram followers. I have 75,000 Facebook followers. And my podcast has over 17 million downloads. Wow. I have reviews that call me a misogynist. Somebody is going to listen to this episode and say that I fat shamed you. Like, no matter what I say or do out loud, someone's going to disagree with me or how I said something or the word I chose or that I laughed earlier about everybody apologizes for everything all the time. Because that is a very mm-hmm. crazy, like, young, liberal, woke thing to do. Yeah. I, I just want to apologize for my privilege before I speak. Like, Jesus Christ, just say the fucking thing. 
Like, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I, you have insurance and somebody else doesn't. Yeah. It's a travesty. It absolutely is. Everyone should have insurance. I'm not saying that, but we can't apologize for every, like, how are we ever going to get through a problem if we can't talk about it? Like, right. We're always yeah. apologizing. I used to say all the time that when um I was just blogging for diabetes, I, I would always say that most people's blogs were just so like filled with them apologizing before they spoke. They'd spend a, mm. a paragraph saying like, listen, I'm not a doctor. This is not advice. You should not pre bolus your meals. It could be dangerous if you don't eat blah, 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 blah. But by the way, I pre bolus my meal. Mm -hmm. Like they'd spend five sentences out of talking you out of pre bolusing before letting you know that they pre bolus. And well, I, is that about, is that about society or is that just about like liability? Isn't like, that the legally? same thing? If I'm going to say, I just picked up my GLP meds on Friday, you know what I paid for them? What? $25. So if, nice. if I don't start by going, I want to just recognize that I have privilege and I have um, a good health care <laughs> and I can afford $25 mm -hmm. and. And it's also, I have a car and I'm so lucky to have a car because so many people are, are unable to drive and I was able to drive to the pharmacy. And like, so I, I want to really say that I recognize my privilege, which is just basically saying, here's my disclaimer before I tell you how much my GLP medication costs. And then if, mm -hmm. I, if I recognize my privilege, then you're not allowed to be mad at me. Right. But you know who's mad when people are mad? Who? Just people who want to be mad. Yeah. Yeah. No one's upset that I have insurance. Nobody gives a shit that I have insurance. Right. But it, but there are people who take great pleasure in going, you have something and they don't. You said it out loud. You're making people feel bad. I'm not mm. making people feel bad. How am I making people feel bad? By saying I have health insurance? Ridiculous. In some way, shape or form, that like apologizing before you're speaking is no different than putting out a disclaimer before you say something valuable. Like you're trying mm -hmm. to deaden the response that comes back. But you really right. mean what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I say to this, I believe that a lot of your anxiety and even people your age's anxiety is coming from this thing that you're worried is happening in other people's heads. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, fuck them. Who cares what they think? <laughs> it, and it, like, go ahead. that sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful coming out of your mouth. But can I get that in my brain? Sure. I don't know. It'll I'll give it to you right now. It's a therapy. Well, listen, I just watched no. this thing. Listen, let me tell you something, Emma, while you say no, okay. maybe I can. Okay. Okay. I just You're watched ready. on the Netflix. I don't know if you're aware of what Netflix is. There was a, uh, what's that called when they tell you a bunch of stuff and it's not entertaining? <laughs> um, um, oh, Christ. Why is the simplest word escaping me? It's a movie that's informative to tell you about a thing. Like a documentary? Thank you. Jesus Christ, that was embarrassing. <laughs> okay. So I just watched a documentary that I want to say mm -hmm. that Rob, the editor of the podcast, told me about. It's about gut health, right? Mm -hmm. And at some point in the documentary, there are these people who are using other people's poop to replace their own gut biome. Now, let me just say this real oh. quick. Hold on, Emma. <laughs> Nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, <laughs> medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan. I said that mostly because of how we were talking about disclaimers a minute ago, and I thought it was funny. So anyway, this lady comes on, lady, girl, she was in her mid-20s, I think. She's talking about her poop, doesn't go well, like just a, a I mean, a literal shit show when she's on the toilet, right? Everything's mm -hmm. wrong. Stage like seven, uh, stage like uh, six. You yeah. got it. You were paying attention, Emma. Okay. Like <laughs> she's got the diarrhea. Things are going wrong. She's like, she said something like, I can't enjoy food. Like I have anxiety when I'm eating because of what's going to happen later. Mm -hmm. And she hears about this. These studies they're doing where they're replacing people's like gut biome with other people's like poop, like, you know, but very medically. But it, these are just studies. And this woman's like going to do it on her own. So well, hold on. You, you don't don't cut on me on her own. Here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, she's going to find a friend. Right. And have a, oh. in a capsule and she's going to eat it. I don't know the details, but she does take her brother's poopy and put it in capsules and you know, i don't know any of the details on it. and i'm not joking around. Oh my don't can try this okay because i don't know okay. what i'm talking about i'm just relaying a story so she okay. does that and in some time she develops i believe hormonal acne that she's never <gasps> had never had in her life but her brother has 
What? Yeah, now hold on, Emma. So then she realizes that's where it's from, and she pivots to her boyfriend's shit. I was just going to say Oh, shit. my God. Right? And she pivots to the boyfriend's shit. The acne goes away, and she starts picking up the boyfriend's mental health issues. What? I know, right? There are little bugs that live in your belly. Did you know there oh. are bugs in your belly? And they change your the way your body works. This is what she was That's saying. Weird. So what I'm saying is, Emma, I think if I shit in a pill and you ate it, you might be more <laughs> confident. <laughs> Send it over, Scott. <laughs> I'm ready. Can I tell you? As long as you'll package them. <laughs> Because I'm not doing that. You don't want to do the hard work? Okay. <laughs> I know none of the details of how this is work. I don't think she just... I, well, listen, first of all, I don't know, but because uh, they don't go over the details of how it actually happens. I would assume that's on purpose. Oh, my gosh. We could ask ChatGPT. <laughs> Maybe it knows. <laughs> uh, but I just want to tell you for a second, this is a complete sidebar, how proud I am of myself because I've wanted to mention the documentary on the podcast. I had no idea how to bring it up. Oh, my gosh. And that I fitted it in here and so, ex I mean, really expertly wrapped it mm -hmm. around all the themes of our conversation. I feel like a genius right now yes yeah no, no i really do done. no 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 seriously i feel very good about myself right now <laughs> <laughs> but how crazy would that be if yeah if that if something like that is because if your anxiety like what if you changed your gut flora and your anxiety changed this is not beyond the shadow of reasonability if you listen to that documentary by the way what was the name of the documentary well do you remember? I mean, remember is a strong word. I couldn't remember the fucking word documentary five minutes ago, but hold on a second. <laughs> I'll find out for you. Props to Rob, by the way. Hack your health, the secrets of your gut. Okay. I enjoyed it. Don't look at the Rotten Tomatoes uh, score. Those people didn't like it at all. But I also okay. think they said something about <laughs> autism that pissed off a bunch of people whose kids have mm -hmm. autism. So that might have hurt the Rotten Tomatoes score. Nevertheless, I don't know how valuable the information in that documentary is, but I will say this, that I thought, my God, that girl got hormonal acne after never having it her whole life and then yeah, picked up her boyfriend's insane. mental health issues like when she changed to his gut biome. And I was like, so they're looking at how to do this. But, but try to imagine, imagine one day in the future, you go to the doctor and say, hey, I have social anxiety. And I'm very worried about what people think to the degree that I can't eat in front of people and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they walked up to you with a shaker and they were like, hey, here you go. You said, what's this? You said, I just some shit from a really confident person. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. The future is just shit pills. Everything is shit pills. <laughs> no more medication. Just shit. I'm telling you, it's, I don't know that it's crazy. Shit. Pills and chat GPT taking over the world will just be robots Whoa. and poopy pills everywhere. All right, Emma. Poopy pills. Poopy oh pills. My God. Yeah, it's all about poopy pills right now. That's what I'm saying. The whole world's just shit pills, you said. <laughs> Have we fixed anything here today for you or no? Fixed. That's a strong word. Giving you a different no, perspective. I feel like, right? Yes, I do feel like I've gained. A different perspective. I have many things to think about. We'll probably be looking for a therapist as well. How many more therapy sessions with me until you're not anxious anymore, do you think? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'd have to start paying you the big bucks. First you... of all, I can't collect a fee on that because I'm not a physician and that would be against the law. <laughs> but I want to say that I also don't think that anything about it. You know, what's funny. May we be serious just for fun at the end here? Yes. A lot of people write me and tell me that listening to the podcast has helped them with a lot of problems like this. And people yeah. who have been on the show have written me back to say that they've made some pretty big changes after our conversation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it's crazy, but it does seem unlikely to me because you just said something so interesting a minute ago. You're like, how do I put that in my head? Mm -hmm. And I don't, obviously I don't know that there's an answer to that, especially if it also could be biological. Right. Is your mom anxious? I think so. I'm very similar to my mom in a lot of different ways. Part of the documentary says that when you're in there cooking in the belly, uh -huh. you yeah. don't have any bacteria. And your first introduction to bacteria is coming face first through the hoochie canal. 
and wow. you and you pick up hoochie stuff bacteria and then it's actually valuable that I can't believe I'm saying this. It's actually valuable that you come out near the mom's butthole because you pick up uh-huh. some bacteria there that helps you right away to digest food and stuff like that. Interesting. Isn't that crazy? You think yeah. any of that's true? I don't know. I don't either, but I'm going to talk more about documentaries on the podcast because it's fun. <laughs> but isn't that crazy? So you get those, you get bacteria like moment one coming out mm-hmm. and then you take in more through all these different things. And then you get this little like mix. But what if you started out with your mom's anxious bacteria? God, I wonder if any of that's true. But I feel like my brother is not anxious. Maybe he came out so, feet first. Yeah, I don't know. I guess his face would still end up near her butthole at some point, though. Actually, no, 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 no. <gasps> Scott, we were both C-sections. Oh, shit. That's another thing they talk about in the, in the documentary, that people who are C-sectioned <laughs> have different bacteria issues. This documentary covers everything. Oh, I the, need to go watch it. Of course you do. Of course you do. I, by the way, now people are going to be like, Scott's listening to pseudoscience and blah, blah, blah. Again, <laughs> let, let me be clear if you're thinking that right now. Go f*** yourself. It's just a podcast and it's free. Don't listen if you don't like it, okay? I don't care. By the way, I do care. I, I genuinely care. Please listen. <laughs> I need that. I need you to listen. But no, but um, yeah, no, I listen. The details are specious because my brain's not good. But I, they talked mm-hmm. about that, that. There's a difference between being C-sectioned and vaginal birth. Mm. Did your mom not love you enough to have you vaginally? What happened there? I don't know exactly, honestly. Well, I know that my brother was C-sectioned, and then you can't deliver vaginally once you've had a C-section. Yeah, then they talk about the zipper, right? Like you just kind of pop it back open again, bring the baby out. Yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, also, I don't think if your mom didn't have you vaginally that she doesn't love you. That was sarcasm <laughs> in case some of you can't hear that. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. All right. Okay. I don't know. I love you, Emma. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Thank you. This has been awesome. I swear to God, these are the best conversations. I don't know what that you have, <laughs> you and I talk about. <laughs> but like I told you before we started recording, Isabel like sent me a note. She's like, at the end of Emma's episode, you said you were going to get back on and talk about her Ozempic. And she's like, are you doing that? Book that. She's such a nice girl. And I'm like, okay. Aww, she loved you. That's so sweet. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. All right. Would you have any questions for me? I don't think so. Okay. Would you, well, okay. Go would ahead. you actually be interested in booking an episode with Jose? He does not have diabetes, but he's similar to you in a caretaker way. But I don't know if you talk to people like that on here. Is that worth it? I don't know. Periodically, I have once or twice. It's usually like one time I did a sister who had type one and her non type one sister. I interviewed both of them. I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. I think the problem becomes like genuinely the problem becomes is that I get him on and I say like, so you're taking an interest in uh, Emma's diabetes. He goes, yes. And then I go, how so? And he goes, I understand like uh, how to bolster things, stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's nice of you. And then I don't know where it goes from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Yeah. You like, it does not hurt my feelings that you are not interested in that at all. So how is this the thing it? that doesn't hurt your feelings? Like an absolutely like, here, you were absolutely turned down. <laughs> like, a person no, said directly no, no, to no. you, no, I don't like your idea. And you're like, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. For real. I'm just saying. It's your podcast. But if it's you, not mine. But if you thought about putting up an Instagram post about this, wouldn't you kill yourself for six <laughs> months wondering how I would respond? <laughs> Maybe. Mm. Perhaps. I mean, did I yeah. tell you that worry is a waste of imagination the last time we spoke? No. I that's a sweet have. quote, though. Yeah, it really is. You're wearing yourself to death. All you people <laughs> out there. Oh, you anxious people. I know it's not on purpose, by the way. I feel terrible. Like, I'm being super serious. Like, I've had so many conversations with people who suffer with anxiety. And mm-hmm. all you feel while you're talking to them is, I do really wish I could get in a pill and make them not feel this or what. I don't really. Yeah. It, it, having that kind of lack of that nervousness and that that mm-hmm. one, wondering, I can't imagine how upsetting it is to feel, like, shackled by it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's quite debilitating at some points, Yeah, but it's not, it's not a constant thing for me at least, which is good. Right. Well, you do well. I mean, you, you teach people like that. You don't have any trouble with being in front of those people while they're. No. Yeah. No. And like when I'm in teacher mode, I feel like my anxiety goes away completely. Like I could be in front of the entire elementary school, which I have to do weekly. I don't get nervous about it at all. That's fascinating. Why not? Kids. Cause they're just kids. It's like, but they're, they're the judgiest me. people on the planet. No, but they're but they're elementary kids. Like when you get to middle school, it's like I would never teach middle school in a million years. 
But like elementary kids, they're just like sweet and they love you. Or they love me at least. Have you seen all those end of year TikToks from teachers? The ones who write down every shitty thing a kid said to them all year and then reads them into yes, their camera? But that's middle school and high school. Usually is, right? I, I guarantee. Yeah. Are you poor? One kid asked the lady. She goes, why? And she goes, and the kid says, because of those pants you're wearing. Like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my God. It's just a launch. There's a never ending supply of videos of teachers telling you the things that students told them that year. And they're ho really horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you're saying younger kids are all like in a different mode. Yeah. Okay. Like, like I, I have gotten the worst I've gotten was after I got engaged. I came to school and all the kids were like so excited and they all wanted to see my ring and they were really sweet about it. And then one of my kindergartners like saw all the commotion and she came up and she was like, are you pregnant? And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not pregnant. Just say, hey, kid, cut me a thing. break. I'm already trying. I, I, I got it. was epic. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah but she didn't mean anything about it it was just her being sweet and trying to be excited i don't so know she saw it's a bunch a of people I, being excited around you and her mind went to oh she's having a baby yeah yeah but that you didn't see poorly you didn't say oh my god that kid's judging my weight no you're fascinating emma how come on it's because they're kids yes it's because they're kids and they're pure yeah i don't know hmm. I, it's much it's easier here's the thing I, it's so much easier for me to be around kids and old people. Like, I don't like being around people my age. Isn't that weird? Uh, no, I see what you're saying. Because so, this goes to show how close you are to not having to suffer with this. Because if they're children of a certain age, you believe their thoughts are pure. Yes. And you think that old people's thoughts are pure. No, but no? they're just easier to talk to because, because they're like easier to joke with. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'm an old soul in that way. I just find it easier because here's, uh, I'm listening. Because when I'm at school, I'm in teacher mode and I'm not like my 20 year old self. I'm like pretending I'm a teacher and authority figure because I have to because I'm a teacher and I have a bunch of fifth graders who will bully me if I don't. So you're then faking I find it till you make it as a teacher. Yes. And you're comfortable <laughs> with older people because they're more mature and you feel like because of that, they're easier to talk to. They've seen more of the world. Do you think that they're going to be less judgmental because they've, they're have they beyond it all? I think so. And it's also because I feel like they look at me and they're like, oh, she's just a fun 20-year-old and she's so cute and fun. But that's your opinion of what they think. Yeah. Also, it was your opinion of what the kids think and your opinion of what the people online might think. Yeah. 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 You don't actually know any of these people. No. Right. Well, but can I tell you some things yeah. I know about old people for sure? What? Like two things I can tell you for sure. What? They're judging every moment of your life. Okay. And that's the first thing because they're alive. And the second thing is if they're in a home, they're fucking like rabbits. You understand what I'm saying right now? Ew. So no. please don't no, say they that are. to me. They are. Ew. They are. Think about it. I want you to think about it. <laughs> no, I actually don't. <laughs> Uh, anyway, do you know that you might not find a higher instance of STDs than in an old folks home? <gasps> That's horrifying information. Mm -hmm. Well, now you know. And those are the people you're comfortable with. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I actually, just to be clear, I actually did mean my coworkers who are probably around your age. That's actually who I oh, meant when, when I said you said, said old, old, you meant like me. So... Not like geriatric. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very judgmental too. Sorry so, about that. <laughs> but see, it's funny. I don't see myself as judgmental. I generalize a lot because I think it's a quicker way to get to something. And I don't have time mm -hmm. to like learn everybody's like, you know what I mean? Like everyone's ins and outs when most of the ins and outs are fairly similar. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I really don't judge people. Like I, and it's funny because if I said that, if Arden was in here and I said, I don't judge people, we would then have a two hour podcast about it. Okay. Actually, that's a great idea. But I don't feel judgmental of people. I genuinely do not care what you do, what you think, how you are. Like, I really mm -hmm. don't care. I am incredibly interested in it. And because of that, I talk about it a lot. And I wonder out loud about people's motivations and what they do in my personal life and on the podcast, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I have no judgment about it. Like you said your height and weight earlier. I didn't have a thought in the world. I didn't go, oh, that means a thing. I just thought I need mm -hmm. those numbers so I can tell you what your BMI is so we can talk about it like that. 
And, Mm -hmm. and I don't like, I have no judgment about it whatsoever. None. I have no opinion about whether you should or shouldn't lose weight. I don't care. I get involved in these conversations, but me personally, I'm very agnostic about things. Hmm. Yeah. I really genuinely, I I genuinely don't give a shit what any of you do. (laughs) You can all go jump off a bridge if you want to. I'd be like, oh my God, that was horrible. And that would be the last time I think about it. And so like, yeah, (laughs) agnostic's the right word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not. Wow. No. No. All right. I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. Is Jose um, anxious? Not as much as me. Well, I feel like we're anxious about different things. Interesting. Like he he has some relationship anxiety, but I don't at all. With you? Yeah. Just because of like past relationships. Like nothing that I've done. Oh, he thinks you're going to break up with him. No. No. But when I get upset, he gets super anxious. Oh, uh, is he from a divorced family? Yes. Yeah. He thinks you're going to get, he thinks your thing's going to, when he sees angry people, he thinks there's going to be a dissolution of the family. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, fe- I used to feel but like that too. I don't carry any anxiety in our relationship at all. About your relationship, you have no anxiety. Yeah. Which is so beautiful. Just about I your think. Instagram posts. <laughs> yeah. But you won't get rid of Instagram. No. Because it's important. Yes. All right. Man, I don't know what to do. I, I'm done. That's it. We're finished now. It's over. Yeah, we're actually not going to go anywhere from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's no nowhere to go. To Just delete the fucking thing. What do you care? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I only have it because I have this podcast. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. If I didn't have this podcast, I wouldn't know what Instagram was. Wow. What's that like? It's fantastic. Because you're, you're old. It's because be I'm real. old. That's why? Yes. What is? But what is? The, okay. One last thing. What does that mean? Why? Because I'm older. Do I not care about Instagram? Because I grew up with Instagram. Bullshit. It's like I grew up. Of- I had a computer too. Stop it. Like, like no, no, no. Like I had a computer. I had the internet. I know how to. Like I know all about that. I've had all the little different social media things coming up. Whatever those things were called. Then Facebook when it was huge <laughs> and blah 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 blah. But why does it matter? No, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. Because it answers it doesn't, but also I don't live in my hometown where I grew up. And I also don't live where I went to college. So I have all these people around the country who I'm friends with who are doing things and I don't know what they're up to unless I I'm gonna say something horrible. Are you really friends with them if you don't know what they're up to? Oh okay. But Aren't I, they just uh, followers who you've met in person once? <laughs> no, not once. No. These are like friends from college and high school. Mm, when you're 40, you're going to think back on those people and go, I wonder what happened to him. And you're going to have no yeah. idea. And you're not going to care. And if he's only presenting himself, like, do you present yourself as you are on Instagram or the best version of you? Oh, the best version. Then do you really know how those people are? No, but I want to know what they're up to. I want to know when they're getting engaged. Well, you want to know or... what they're up to. They, they they think to pull out their phone when they think they have a good photo to take. That's not what they're up to. Emma, I'm right. It's okay if you don't you want to believe it. right. I... But the thing is that Instagram is not going away. Social media is not going away. It goes away it's if you delete it. It's completely gone. <sighs> it, for the same reason, I don't understand how somebody could become cyber bullied. I don't understand why you won't delete Instagram. <laughs> yeah, well... Do you know who I know for sure is real? What? Right now. I could walk downstairs at this moment in my life, see my son, my daughter, my wife, and two dogs. These are the people I know for sure are alive. That's it. My neighbors left to go somewhere a couple of days ago. They could be dead. I have no idea. If they never came back, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I'd be like, I wonder why that house is like just sitting there. That is maybe what I would think. Okay. So like, and if my neighbor... I'm using them as an example because they're lovely people and this is definitely not happening. If my neighbor was somewhere right now seated and he had 20 people around him, he goes, I want to tell you a story about a mother named Scott. Okay. And he was bad mouthing (laughs) me. Like he was using all the, like the favorites, like I I should just get up all my bad reviews and read them. He's saying those types of things about Mm -hmm. me, right? Like just a horrible person and blah, 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 blah. And he doesn't care about these. He is a massages. He had this girl on one time. She was a stripper. He talked about her boobs. What a an idiot blah, blah, all that stuff okay <laughs> by the way she's a stripper what do you want me to talk to her about physics also she's a lovely girl and i really like her and um but that's not the point 
Yeah. He's off in the world somewhere trashing me right now. Mm -hmm. I'm unaware of it. Does it matter? (sighs) It matters to you, doesn't it? I think so. Yeah, I don't give a f***. Why would it matter? There's 20 people I've never met before, three states over. My neighbors tell them bad stuff about me. Why does it matter? (laughs) Uh, Emma, you're not going to help me. Because you don't think it matters. Yeah, because you agree with me. I do. When's this going to change? What do you think will happen that'll that'll shift you? I think maybe when I like have a family, when I have my own kids, when I'm, I don't know, worrying too much about their life, then I can't, I don't have the time to worry about mine. Is it wrong of me to say when you have something that's actually worth worrying about to worry about? No. No? That's probably true. Okay. All right. Well, this episode's going to get me in a f- ton of trouble. I hope you're happy. I can't oh. wait to see that. I can't so- wait to see the <laughs> reviews. Let's see which one of you is wokest when you review my conversation <laughs> with Emma. Good luck. You think they'll listen this way, all this way? Oh, no, there's no way they make it to the, no, no, we lost them. They were already writing the bad review back when I said, I don't, I I don't want to apologize for having health insurance before (laughs) I talk about something. Like, yeah, they're already like this motherfucker. Oh, they'll use like words that make them sound fancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to read you the words? I can find it for you real quick. (laughs) If you <laughs> want. Go find the last bad review and tell you what they said. I'm sure the last social justice warrior who left a review called me a misogynist. Hold on a second, we'll find out. I have a daughter. Wait, so wait, so where do they write these reviews? Shh, I ain't gonna tell you that. <laughs> Why don't you delete that app, Scott? I can't, you can't, uh, I, because I get a report about, I have, um, I'm a business owner. <laughs> I get a report about them sent to me. <laughs> well, delete those emails. Okay, well, I don't read them with, I, listen, do I sound worried about this review? <laughs> no. Oh, here, here. Oh, here's the last person that hit me on the. Um, here's my latest privilege email. Oh gosh. Take a shot. Lose weight. One star. I assume they would have given me zero stars if it gave them the opportunity. To- <laughs> Wait, that's all they said. No, that's the title. Oh. As a person wow. with type one that has struggled with body image issues, listening to Scott talk about how great he looks and feels because of Wegovi is getting really annoying. Those were in capitals, really and annoying. And they used, and I want to be clear, I don't want to get this wrong. One, two, three. It looks like six exclamation points. So I think they really meant mm-hmm. it. If only mm-hmm. we could all just take a shot to lose weight. Check your privilege. <laughs> <laughs> I want the person to know who wrote that, that when I read that, I laughed like a son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like, I was like, <laughs> how could that possibly bother them so much that they were like, how do you leave a review for this podcast? I have a weight loss diary trying to help people understand what it's like to be on a GLP medication because a lot of people are using it. I'm being incredibly honest while I'm on there because I don't think it's going to be helpful if I get on and pretend. And I also don't think it'll be helpful if I get on and apologize for 20 minutes every time before I say something that you need to know. Anyway, mm-hmm. that was that was that one. And a lot of these are really great. I don't want to lie to you. These, a lot of these are actually fantastic. <laughs> Five stars, incredibly helpful. Uh, thank you for doing this. Everyone should have the juice box pod. All right. All right. Fairness. There's not a lot of bad reviews, Aww. but I don't know. I fully admit. I don't understand why anybody would leave a review for anything. I've listened to things that I've completely disagreed with and it has never made me want to leave a review for it. I don't understand like your whole generation of like, my thoughts mm-hmm. are so important. I'm going to put them here. You know who sees those reviews? Nobody. <laughs> and if they do, It's because they're trying to figure out if this podcast is going to help them with their diabetes and you may have just talked them out of trying it. And Mm -hmm. by the way, I don't talk about a GLP medication in the pro tip series, the bold beginning series, or a number of other places where people with type one diabetes learn how to be healthy and take good care of themselves. So Mm -hmm. I hope that person's happy. They probably just killed a child. Can you hear sarcasm, Emma, anymore? It's yeah. yeah, yeah, Okay. It's okay. That's so funny. (laughs) Yeah. I'm done. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get me very chatty. I'm so glad. I appreciate this. Thank you so much. Hold on one second. <laughs> You're just going to keep talking. You're so amenable. <laughs> I'm, I, like I said, I don't have anything else going on today. It could be a six hour episode. I can't afford to edit a six hour episode. The guy that <laughs> With does all it, these swear words, you're going to have to bleep out. I can't, yeah. I can't even afford to run this one, but okay. Hold on a second. Arden started using a contour meter because of its accuracy, but she continues to use it 
because it's durable and trustworthy. If you have diabetes, you want the Contour Next Gen Blood Glucose Meter. There's already so many decisions. Let me take this one off your plate. Contournext.com slash juicebox. Are you tired of getting a rash from your CGM adhesive? Give the Eversense 365 a try. Eversense CGM.com slash juicebox. Beautiful silicone that they use. It changes every day. It keeps it fresh. Not only that, you only have to change the sensor once a year. So, I mean, that's better. Did you know if just one person in your family has type 1 diabetes, you're up to 15 times more likely to get it too. So screen it like you mean it. One blood test can spot type 1 diabetes early. Tap now, talk to a doctor, or visit screenedfortype1.com for more info. I can't thank you enough for listening. Please make sure you're subscribed or following in your audio app. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast. I want to thank you so much for listening and remind you, please subscribe and follow to the podcast wherever you're listening right now. If it's YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other audio app, go hit follow or subscribe, whichever your app allows for, and set up those downloads so you never miss an episode, especially in Apple Podcasts. Go into your settings and choose download all new episodes. The episode you just heard was professionally edited by Wrong Way Recording, wrongwayrecording.com.